Hi there and welcome to Reedy's online service. Thanks again for joining with us today. My name is David, I'm one of the pastors here at the Reedy Creek Baptist Church. Thanks again for joining with us. Well, it's my privilege now to read to you from God's Word, this time from the book of Jonah, starting at chapter 3. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I have given you. This time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a great city so large that it took him three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, Forty days from now Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message. And from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on a burlap to show their sorrow. Father God, we thank you for your holy word. I pray now that you may speak to us the message that we need to hear. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We are going through the 12 minor prophets of the Old Testament. They're only considered minor because of the size of their book. Certainly not by the powerful context of their message. Well, so far we've looked at Hosea, Joel, Obadiah and Amos. And today we're looking at Jonah. Jonah lived in the northern kingdom during the reign of King Jeroboam II. Now you may remember from last week that there were two kingdoms. There was that southern kingdom and there was also the northern kingdom of Israel. The northern kingdom was much more populous and prosperous than its southern kingdom. However, as the rich got richer, the poor got poorer. The increased prosperity resulted in a materialistic culture that thrived on injustice to the poor and oppressed. And this was one of the key messages of Amos. Well, Jonah was one of the few prophets that actually grew up in this northern kingdom. During this time of prosperity and growth, God calls Jonah. And so we read in Jonah chapter 1 verse 1, The Lord gave this message to Jonah, Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. Well, while the other prophets were called to preach to God's people in either the southern or the northern kingdoms, this time God calls Jonah to go outside of both of these kingdoms and go to Nineveh, which at the time was the capital of Assyria. The people of Nineveh, they were really wicked. They would rape the women, they would murder the children. They would take the men and then they would skin them alive. They would bury them in the desert and they would pull out their tongues out to drive and then they would drive a stake through their tongues so that they would go crazy before they died of starvation or thirst in this most horrendous death in the middle of the desert. So God tells Jonah to go. And instead of hopping on the next camel and going out to Nineveh, we read in verse 3 of chapter 1, but Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. I can't blame Jonah, can you? I mean, I would have done the same. You see, Nineveh was located on the outskirts of Mosul in modern-day northern Iraq. Now, you may remember Mosul was one of the cities that ISIS overtook back in 2014. It was a terrible time for many locals with thousands and thousands killed in horrific ways and many women raped. They were monsters. And so it would be like any of us being called by God to go to this very place and preach to ISIS that what they were doing was wrong. Wow. It certainly was a tough gig for Jonah. And so no wonder he went in the opposite direction. If you grew up in Sunday school, you would know what happened next to Jonah. In going the opposite direction, Jonah hopped into a boat and the Lord caused a storm out at sea. 
The ship was overloaded and so Jonah took the blame. And the sailors, well, they threw Jonah overboard and the storm stopped immediately while deep below in the deeps of the sea, the Lord arranged for a big fish to come and, and swallow Jonah. I mean, how weird. But get this. Back in June this year, a man was literally swallowed by a whale for 30 seconds and survived. Watch this. Home against the odds. Okay. Dad. After surviving an ordeal straight out of the storybooks. Fisherman Michael Packard was diving for lobster 45 feet down in Cape Cod when his day took an unexpected turn. I was just about at the bottom and I just felt this truck hit me and everything just went dark and I could just feel just, just hard stuff all around me like... And I just thought, did I just get eaten by a white shark? And, and then I said, no, I don't feel any teeth. And I said, oh my God, I'm in the mouth of a whale. In fact, it was a humpback whale. And for 40 seconds, Michael was stuck in its mouth. He's swimming and I could just be in his mouth and he's swimming and I'm like, this is how you're going to go, Michael. This is how you're going to die. Losing hope, he thought about his boys and the rest of his family. All of a sudden, I saw light and I just could feel his head shaking and I just got thrown out of his mouth into the water. It was just white water everywhere. As his friend pulled him into the boat, he was in serious pain and thought the whale had broken his legs. In fact, he'd dislocated his knee and had other soft tissue injuries, but was otherwise unscathed. For son Jacob, a text from his mother was an unexpected interruption to lessons. Your dad was, was diving and a whale just, I don't know, attacked him, ate him. Luckily, the whale decided it didn't want Michael for breakfast after all, and he's already thinking about when he can dive back into work. Emma Birchley, Sky News. For Jonah, he spent three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish and in utter dependence on God and probably out of immense fear, Jonah just cried out to God. His prayer of desperation and repentance is recorded in chapter 2. Well, after that prayer, we read in verse 10 of chapter 2, that the Lord ordered the fish to spit Jonah out onto the beach. Sounds a little bit like what happened to that man when the whale spat him out from his mouth. Well, Jonah lived. Straight after this, we read, Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. The word of the Lord came to him again and a second time. The one who did not deserve in any way a second chance got a second chance from God. God is a God of second chances. He came to Jonah a second time. He came to him again. There are those of you that have never surrendered your life to God. And he is coming to you again today at this moment. Others of you, like Jonah, you've been in fellowship with God, but you've been disobedient. In the previous chapter, Jonah says, What I vowed, I will make good. And today, there will be those of you watching that will say, You know, I'm coming back to God. I'm going to do what He called me to do. God is coming to me a second time. So the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time and he gave Jonah this mission, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I've given you. The message that Jonah was to give to Nineveh was one of judgment upon this awful group of people. There are those of you that if you listen to the Spirit of God, you will recognize that there is something that God wants you to do, to reach out to someone, 
or to apologize to someone or to give something away or to repent of some sin or to make something right. Get up and go. Do it immediately. Get up and go now. He says, go immediately. Pick up everything and go now in that great city of Nineveh and proclaim the message that I've given you. Now, what did God call Nineveh? Why did God call Nineveh great? When you consider that the people there were so horrible. Well, it was great in influence. It was great in power. It was an ancient population of about 120,000 people. And it was a kind of like the cultural epicenter that people would learn from. It was surrounded by a huge wall that was about 12 kilometers long. It was a fortress and God was saying, get up and go now. Go immediately to these people that you despise. Do what you want to do now. Go, go now and proclaim the message that I'm giving you. God may be calling you to get up and go. Go and repent of the things you know you shouldn't be doing or even thinking. Some of you need to get up and go and offer forgiveness to a person that has hurt you. Some may need to get up and go and tell a friend about Jesus. Some may need to stop procrastinating and get get up and go to Bible college as God is calling you to go. God can stir your heart when you're a teenager even. You know, when I was 13, I had this weird dream. I dreamt that I was uh, pretending to, to preach one night. And now, it's a weird dream because which 13-year-old kid would lie there in bed and just start dreaming about preaching? I did. And at the young age, God started calling me. Through a series of circumstances or God moments, such as being electrocuted, God was calling me. This dream started to die out. After all, I was a teenager having fun. But God came back at me again when I was in year 12 at school. There was unsettledness within me until someone said something about going into ministry and sharing with my dad. And God clearly said to me, get up and go. My parents wanted me to wait for a few years. The principal of the Bible college suggested that I wait for a few years. But God said, now. I finished my year 12 and went to Bible college. Maybe God is calling you to get up and go. In verse 3, we read how Jonah finally got it right. This time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh. Jonah obeyed God. In the past, he didn't. In the past, some of us didn't. Maybe we need to get up and go. Verse 4 says, On the day Jonah entered the city. Now, how would you be? Remember what these people were like? Here he was in the very city where people carried out those terrible acts. I'm sure that he was scared. He was scared to death, I'm sure. Walking in and he preaches what God tells him to preach. The Bible says what Jonah preached. 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. 40 more days. This message was short, direct, and it was offensive. Now, the word destroyed in the Hebrew language has a double meaning. This word can either mean overturned and destroyed, or it could mean overturned and changed. The prophetic message from God, 40 days and you will be destroyed, or 40 days and you will be changed forever, which will it be? Some of you, you may be on day 39. I'm sorry this isn't like three steps to happiness, but this may be the one step to repentance that you need to hear. Time is ticking. 40 days, Jonah says. He preaches this message with boldness and with passion. And then in verse 5, we read something hard yet incredible. The people of Nineveh believed God's message. And from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on a burlap to show their sorrow. 
It is hard to believe this. It will be like the Taliban in Afghanistan telling their people to love one another, even their enemies. And this is what happened to Nineveh. They fasted. In the Old Testament, fasting was a symbol of humility and repentance and a desire to see and to hear from God. And they put on saff cloths as a symbol of sorrow for what they had done. Now look at verses 6 to 9. When the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying, he stepped down from his throne and took off his royal robes. He dressed himself in a burlap and sat on a heap of ashes. Then the king and his nobles sent a decree throughout the city. No one, not even the animals from your herds and flocks may eat or drink anything at all. People and animals alike must wear garments of mourning. Everyone must pray earnestly to God. They must turn from their evil ways and stop all their violence. Who can tell? Perhaps even yet God will change his mind and hold back his fierce anger from destroying us. Amazing. Who knows? God might give us a second chance. God might have mercy on us. Jonah comes out preaching fire. And the Ninevites, the people who were furthest from, from God, said, we are going to turn to God. There are people that we either go to school with or work alongside with that, may, that we may think are just so far from God that they will probably wouldn't even come to faith in Jesus. God is calling you to be his light. He can change even the hardest of hearts. During the Alpha course that we did recently here at Reading, we heard several testimonies of hardened people whose lives changed because of the power of God. I got in with the wrong crowd and I started to um, pinch cars, burgle houses, uh, become known, me and my friends become known as very high profile thieves really. I used to carry big knives, uh, the, the big knives to the smaller knives down my waist and I was the kind of person where if you pulled a knife out I would use it. I ended up stabbing someone in the head. I ended up um, stabbing someone just missing his heart and going through the top of his shoulder, uh, the, the top of his chest and his shoulder away. He dropped to the floor and so I was on the run for two attempted murders. And then I was just, when I went to prison, I had such a hatred for the system. And I couldn't handle being told what to do, couldn't handle prison officers mucking me about. When I went out on association, I got to prison officer and I, uh, I stabbed them. And then this led to me going into maximum security prisons, being put on CSC. It's where they feed you through a hatch in the door. There's no physical contact. So they have to have riot shields and riot gear on. Um, and that was my life for a long, long time, basically. And I, I just was going from prison to prison, prison to prison. But then I ended up going to Long Larton in Worcestershire. And when I was in there, I ended up going in an Alpha course. Never heard of an Alpha course, didn't know anything. And I just remember walking in because they'd sent me down. I sat down on a chair and I thought, oh no, it's a Christian thing. And we'd just go there every week and I would argue. And the pastor, um, I remember he come to me, he said, right, I'm going to say a few scriptures first before we pray. And one of them was, no one's righteous, not one. We all fall short of the glory of God. And then he said the verses about Jesus and explained a bit why he died on the cross for sinners and stuff. And then he said, pray. So I started praying and I said, uh, God, I said, God, if you're real, come into my life because I hate who I am and nothing happened but then as I was talking to the pastor I started to feel this energy feeling in my stomach and it started to raise up and raise up and raise up and raise up and I just broke out into uncontrollable um, tears and I just sobbed <clears throat> and I just right there
because that was a change in my whole life. I knew God was real, um, and no one will change that now. And then I remember <laughs> running on the wing. People clearly knew that I would become a Christian. So I actually helped them on another two Alpha courses. And then I, I, um, I got released. I've been in a prison where I... Because you would have thought that the prison where I stabbed the prison officers would have been the last prison to have me. But they were the first. That's how good works. The best thing for me is going in prisons and helping the lads in prison and, and trying to tell them about God. I've got five kids and then my life. Um, and what upsets me is because now I know um, that back then, if I had the kids, uh, they wouldn't have had a good upbringing. And now they sit on the night and have Bible studies with their dad. Um, <clears throat> have Bible studies with their dad. Have a life. They're beautiful. Um, and my life, and this probably is my wife and my kids, are the best gift, that, apart from the grace God's given me, is the best gift I've ever He'll ever give me. Um, Didn't expect to cry like that. Recovered now. Wow, what an incredible story of the power of God changing such a person's life. Wonderful. When God saw what the Ninevites did and how they turned from their evil ways, what did he have on them? Our reading says he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. God gave them a second chance. For Jonah, he heard God's mission for him a second time. This time he wasn't going to let the hierarchy of all the evil people stop him from doing what he was called to do. He got up and he went. And for many of us, we need to get up and go, to pray with someone who is doing it tough, to offer forgiveness to a person who has really offended, offended us, to share the gospel of Jesus with a friend, to do something for the poor. The Christian faith is not just about me and my needs. Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. And he died on the cross for everyone, offering grace and mercy. We are now to be his Jonas, his light, and get up and go. God says to you, here is your mission, get up and go. And some of us, we need that second chance to do his will. You know, Jonah was one of the only four writing prophets that Jesus mentioned by name during his earthly ministry. The others being Isaiah, Daniel and Zechariah. But Jonah received more than just a mere mention. Jesus actually identified himself with the prophet's three-day experience in the belly of the great fish, noting it as a foreshadow of his own death when Jesus would spend three days in the heart of the earth before his resurrection. And this can be found in Matthew chapter 12. Would you please pray with me? Loving Father, we come before you now. Father, I pray that you would stir us up. God, stir us up. God, break our hearts from our own ungodliness. Forgive us for our sins. God, forgive us as a church for the things that we've failed you in. Stir us as individuals. God, stir us with a divine passion. Empower us to let go of anything that keeps us from doing everything that you want us to do. And as we continue praying today, there are some who may recognize God's coming to me again. Maybe in your past you felt drawn to God, but you just kind of did your own thing. You didn't say yes. He's coming to you a second time. You need his grace. You need his compassion. You need his second chance because you have walked away from him. You have rejected him. You have dishonored him. 
And Lord, we pray that you will forgive those of us who have walked away from you in the opposite direction. We are sorry. Grant us your mercy, giving us another chance this time. I will not turn back. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. If you would like to talk about anything that I've shared about today from the book of Jonah, please don't hesitate to get in contact with us. The details can be found in your YouTube description. So thanks very much for listening to us today. We look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you.